Gardner here, and today we are going to be talking about using sensory details in a narrative. Have you ever begun writing a story about an experience you had only to find that your memory of the story was a lot more exciting than the story you created on the paper? Well, you're not alone in this. In fact, even I as your teacher have this problem too. As writers, we all face what I like to call the detail dilemma. We have such vivid memories of our experiences, but when it comes time to put them down on paper, we're just not sure where to start or how to describe what we see in our minds. Well, my goal today is to help with this problem. By the end of this video, you can expect to know what sensory details are, why we use them, how we use them, and when we use them in stories. And ultimately, you can expect to be able to incorporate sensory details into your own writing. Let's get started. First of all, let's define what a sensory detail is. According to study.com, sensory details, also referred to as imagery, include sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. Writers employ the five senses to engage a reader's interest. In other words, any detail that evokes one of these senses in your reader will fall under this category. These details are really going to paint the picture for your readers and help them be engaged in your story. At first, the task of creating sensory detail can seem a bit daunting, but a great place to start is to close your eyes and imagine yourself back in a moment in your story. Then, try asking yourself the following questions. At this moment, what did I see? What did I smell? What did I hear? What did I touch or feel? And what did I taste? Then, simply list out these details and begin incorporating them into your story to bring the words to life. To make this a little easier to grasp, let me give you a sample of how this works in a story. Last week, I saw Captain America at the local dollar theater. The bitter outside air from an open door cooled my skin and caused my arm hairs to rise, but the theater's velvet cushioned seat hugged me close and warmed my frame. The smell of freshly popped popcorn wafted in from the lobby, causing my mouth to water. I popped a piece in my mouth from my own bag, crunching down and smiling as the buttery, salty flavor touched my tongue. An image of Captain America decked out in his red, white, and blue suddenly flashed across the black screen. A few rows back, three young girls giggled and gabbed about how cute the hero was. My husband Rob turned around in his seat, placed his finger over his lips, and whispered, Shh. Okay. Now come back to real life and take a moment to consider that experience. How did this description compare with being able to experience actually attending a movie? Did it paint the picture for you? Did it bring the story to life? Let's compare that description to simply telling the reader what happened. I attended a movie. This description, though it accurately describes what happened, lacks the life that comes from using sensory details. And really, this is exactly why we use them. Now, you might be wondering, when is the appropriate time to use such details? In our movie theater example, we use sensory details to describe an experience. However, we can also use imagery to describe events, settings, and characters. Let's test our understanding of this concept by using sen the senses to describe a character from a well-known movie. Following is a clip from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Pay special attention to Hagrid as a character, considering ways you might describe him using sensory details. Remember the questions we discussed earlier. What do I see, smell, hear, touch or feel, and taste? Here we go. That thing has a name? Well, of course he's got a name. He's mine. I bought him off an Irish fella I met down in the pub last year. Then I lent him to Dumbledore to guard the... Yes? shouldn't have said that. No more questions. Don't ask any more questions. That's top secret, that is. But Hagrid, whatever Fluffy's guarding, Snape's trying to steal it. Codswallop. Professor Snape is a Hogwarts teacher. Hogwarts teacher or not, I know a spell when I see one. I've read all about them. You've got to keep eye contact, and Snape wasn't blinking. Exactly. <sighs> now you listen to me, all three of you. You're meddling in things that ought not to be meddled in. It's dangerous. What that dog is guarding is strictly between Professor Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. 
Nicholas Flamel? I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. So, from this short clip, what do we learn about Hagrid? How might we describe him to readers using the senses? Well, perhaps we could start by describing his dark, ragged beard or his brown, sunken eyes. Perhaps we could explain that his suit coat smelled of corned beef and mustard. Or perhaps we could explain that the grasp of his rough hands caused pain to shoot through our arms each time he grabbed them. You get the idea, but the possibilities are endless. By simply using the five senses, writing goes from a mere list of events to a lively, engaging story. And all because we as writers chose to use our senses to invite readers in. I hope this has enabled you to better understand the use and importance of sensory details in a narrative. And more importantly, I hope you have new ideas of how you might incorporate such a practice into your own writing. Remember that this skill, like the other skills we have discussed in class, may take time to develop. But as you practice applying it, you will be amazed at what your stories become. And it all begins with one small detail at a time. Thanks for joining me today. Right on!